This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. Jennifer, when we were talking yesterday about BTK, you had mentioned you were going back through some of the original testimony given by Dennis Rader upon his arrest. Not just the documents that we see of written note, but also his actual statements and some of it really standing out to you from a different perspective. All these years later, what was it that was standing out to you as being new breadcrumbs in this case? Well, one of the things that I found most interesting, and I'll certainly put a tweet out about this with the receipts showing his words and his statement, but really was his proclivity toward really wanting to victimize young victims. That was really what he preferred. It was very interesting in reading how he tried to do just that. He tried to victimize younger girls, you know, young girls, and it just didn't work out for him. You know, he talks about where he would lay in wait and was actually in someone's houses, house waiting on them and they never came home. So he ended up just taking a memento. In that case, I believe it was underwear, if I recall from what I read. But the, this is a lot of documentation. And, you know, investigators are going to have to go back and look at that. The other thing that I think is very important to realize is the investigators that handled these cases initially, they didn't just look at BTK. They had other possible suspects. So if you look as an example of the investigator in Missouri, she had other individuals that at least she, you know, sort of indicates that she thought were really the prime suspects that she still thinks could be the prime suspects. And so I think it's hard for her to just rule them out when possibly she has strong evidence against them because of these new findings when none of the new findings link him. Yeah. And that's interesting because everyone is trying to just find answers. The the goal here is to bring justice uh, to these victims. So it's easy to get caught up and go, oh, baby, BTK is the key for this. But it's also obviously important to take a look at the evidence in a very hard light and say, yes, this does make sense or no, this doesn't when it truly does or does not. Right. You know, the importance is the truth. And I know Carrie certainly wants that. I know these investigators who have investigated Mm -hmm. these cases for years want that. And while it could be considered sort of an easy explanation, you know, when you had a serial killer that was in the area, Mm -hmm. you know, (laughs) that in and of itself is a bit of a red flag. But you can't just go off of that. You have to have evidence to go along with other than they were in the neighborhood. The fact that we're just starting to have some of these things come to light, some of these drawings that he made, some of these pictures that are coming out that have been in evidence, and the text, the book that he was working on writing his novel or diary, whatever you want to call it, it's all just been sitting there. We've seen bits and pieces. I know Carrie has some of it, and a lot of it, sits with law enforcement. Wouldn't it make sense at this point to release these sort of things? I know it is an ongoing investigation, but as as long as this has been sitting here, getting it out there to the public and the amount of people who are ready to start digging into this, obviously there's only so many resources that exist in every department. And you'll have, I'm sure, a lot of, you know, noise as well if you were just to throw it all out there but getting it out into the public and people who do want to seriously take a look at this maybe have some leads some directions to go based on what he's talking about would it make sense to put it out there and just see what happens what what arguments are to be made or or what sort of leads are to come out of it i think that it's a bit of a double-edged sword i agree with you that certainly some of the sleuths out there are very talented and Sometimes they can really find little nuggets that law enforcement either didn't find yet or were never going to find. So I agree on that front. But what all is in those writings? I know I'm privy to some things that I'm not at liberty to say. I hate to do that. I never do that. But just, you know, my relationship with Carrie, you know, that I can't talk about that I know for a that it would be it would not serve any good purpose to have some of those out there. Okay. 
So I think that while sketches to see if anybody would recognize or if something looked familiar or the sketches of their faces and things like that could be very worthwhile, I don't think it could be any sort of blanket release. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.